In this video, traders, we are going to talk about scaling into a runaway market. Stay tuned. Hey guys, well, welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so runaway market, how do we define that? Let's quickly define a runaway market and let's talk about how we scale into this. So the, the challenge we have with the runaway market, and the challenge that kind of, I, especially in current conditions, and this is why I'm doing this video, guys, because I've kind of adapted and tweaked my strategy a bit to accommodate the slight change in urgency that we see sometimes with some markets at the moment, especially if you're trading some stocks, or US stocks. So runaway market is when you know, the market is just on, on and on and on, and it's just running. And if you are using your traditional methods of entry, waiting for a pullback, uh, waiting for some kind of broad flag, uh, sort of unwinding and the stochastic or some, something like that where you're just waiting for that spring to contract again, you often never get on board. And if you do, it's very, very late in the day, the risk order ratio becomes a bit skewed. And so sometimes you find you're missing out on some of these trades. Now, let's make a distinction here. We're not talking about just chasing blindly. Well, oh, we kind of are, but bear with me, stick with me. We're talking about trying to get on board the move, limiting the risk, and then dialing up the position size as it goes in our favor. So what we're doing is a so runaway market definition is just shooting off um, no opportunity for unwinding and getting on board. So, or, or, you, or you haven't seen it and you want to get on it. So you're not, fo we're not, let's just, again, let's just be, be clear. This isn't the chimp saying, get in, get in, get in FOMO. This is let's get in. Yes, we're gonna be chasing a little bit, but we're gonna do it in a sensible manner. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's no harm and damage done. So what we're doing here is we're waiting for, you know, an opportune moment, but the secret to this is to break the order down into chunks. So rather than sticking on 100% of your order straight away as you might normally do on a pullback because you're framing the trade under a specific low or a wick or a trend line break or something like that, in this scenario, you're basically saying, okay, well, you know what, I'm gonna split my order into 25% uh, chunks or even less. You can go 10% chunks times 10, whatever you want. So splitting it into chunks and saying, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a trade and it, you can adjust this depending on how risky you feel this is. If you feel it's super risky, you know, I've put a 10th of a position before, but if you feel like there's still some edge there and it's not too chasing, then put a quarter on. So you put your first clip on, you buy your first clip here, bang, that's clip number one. Now, you give this a little bit more room so yes, you're still risking a reasonable amount, but you're kind of saying, okay, I'm gonna give this more room. This is the most vulnerable part of the trade. This is the time when, okay, if you get it wrong and this thing reverses and comes straight back, you're gonna take a stop. But you could afford for the stop to be a little bit wider because you've taken a 10th of a position, you've taken a quarter of a position, whatever it may be. Now what you do is you see if you get some kind of mileage. Now, the, the, the trick here is not to be too aggressive with your scaling. So wait, so if you're saying, let's say you're trading intraday, and let's say this thing's starting to run, and then let's say it starts to run on again, and you get a, a pretty decent cushion there, and you have some time under your belt as well. Don't forget guys, time is a great way to, uh, for the market to digest. The longer it stays up, even if it's shooting up in a, in a very, very uh, aggressive manner, the longer it's doing that, the more it's accepting that rather than just up and down. So get a bit of time, a bit of price between you, and then you go, right, well, now it's time to add on my second quarter. And of course, if you can wait for little pullbacks, if you can wait for a pause, if you can wait for something that's normally better, but if you have to buy a breakout, then fine. The whole purpose of this is it allows you to get in buying little tiny breakouts like this. So let's say you put in your second clip here. All right, now your average is here. We're still vulnerable, right? We're still vulnerable to a big swing down. And this is, we kind of almost got to expect it. So we might get a kind of retracement back, but you've still got your broad stop in place. You've still got it quite wide because you're on a smaller position size. So you can still sit and comfortably through these kind of rotations. And ultimately what you're doing is you're trying adding to the position and leveraging on the unrealized PNL that you've been accumulating to build the full size position. And the hope is, and I say you hope because you know this isn't this isn't something you want to trade all the time because you know this is this is chasing and buying at highs which I never think works. 
um, over 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 a long period of time. That's ultimately what we're looking for, guys. Edge that works consistently, not every single time, but over a number of trades that works out. I think this is something where if you're in a very specific market environment, something's very very aggressive, you can feather yourself into this trade by buying a little bit on a breakout, a little bit more, a little bit more, giving yourself room, widening the stop, and ultimately what you're trying to do is trying to leverage yourself into a position by leveraging that unrealized pin on those smaller positions, so that you have a full size position at the end of the day or at the end of you know a, a period of time that you're trying to get into the trade and you're like okay I have this trade I've, I've got into the trade yes I've had to kind of wheedle my way in a little bit by adding and scaling up the position by using small size but I'm in it now I've got a full size clip that I want the risk is at a sensible level I've got some unrealized p and there as a cushion I've got my stop as well that accommodates the volatility increased volatility okay now you can almost categorize it as a normal trade that you would have got into on some sort of pullback or rotation and say, right, I've got the I've got the cushion, I've got some unrealized, I've got my position size, now I manage it as normal. So this is a way you can kind of scale into the trade even when it's not really, you know, feeling exactly right. You know, can't really find that sweet spot. Because I think that, uh, especially for me, the challenge is when you've got these and you think, yeah, you know what, I've got good chance it's going to close at highs today, this market, or good chance it's going to kind of run on for the next few or four days if you're swing trading. But you can't find a good place to get in. I like to wait for little wicks. I like to wait for a little range break fake flag type pattern. Something, some spring contract and try and find the stretch again. If I can't find that and I feel like I'm prepared to get in early, this is when you can kind of put some on the table, you can split it into smaller chunks and try and sort of sneak your way into the deal without having to go all in or, or and take a stop and kind of and getting frustrated with things because obviously if you're in here full side your stop might be there and it, it, these kind of things just whip back and forth wildly so summary guys is to split your order up into tenths or quarters or whatever you choose and then scale into position a wide stop add a little bit more bit of time in between the scales build up position size you want leverage on the unrealized PL, leverage on the cushion and then just say right now i'm in the trade that i wanted to be in with the size i wanted to be in i've got some under the belt how do i manage this and if you're right sometimes you can get a very very good kind of uh, yield from this kind of trade because you've already got a cushion next day maybe you get some follow through you're in the full size that you want it to be obviously some overnight gap risk of trading the stock and then you can trade it accordingly and same with scaling out and you can scale out and utilize the fact of scaling out but that's kind of a different topic anyway guys, scaling into a runaway market splitting into splitting it into chunks leveraging on that unrealized PL. take care see you next one bye bye